Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. In the previous episode, we have connected our player status, each variables with our UI text content. Also, we have to talk about the order of the execution for event function. We can manually change the Unity script's execution a number of the event functions in a predetermined order. Now we can add a header above some fields in the inspector. Save the script and switch back. There is one title above these variables. Now we press the spacebar, our player will receive 600 experiments because inside the add experience method we plus equals to the 600. So if we want our player hit one weak enemy and should receive 200 experiments, we can change to 200. Adding one parameter can be beneficial a lot of ways because different enemies will produce different experience to our player. The parameter is an integer type variable called amount. In order to see clearly in later, we set the parameter bank to 200 inside the parentheses. Then try again, making sure everything is correct. Now we want to display our increment on our canvas. Because our player level up fast and all of the status suddenly change, our user need more obvious feedback to know how much we grew up. So we need to show some increment on our canvas. Let's create one UI text and change its size. We want to use the text component to display. We need to display our animation. Select our new UI text. Inside the animation, click the create buttons and create one animation clip. Then we can create one animation in our new animation folder. We call this clip level display. We want to make one pop-up animation when we level up. Press the record button first. We want our UI text scale up to 1.5 in one second and return back to his original size in 1.2 seconds. We don't want our animation play on awake, so I would like to create another animation clip called Level Display Idle. Press the record button first and change the scaler to a different number, and then drag back to 1. Go to animator window, set our idle animation clip as the layer default states. Making the transition from idle to level display. Also makes this transition bank. Press the add button and create one trigger named level up. In our scripts, if the animator is a trigger as the level up, we will make the transition from idle to level display animation clip. Uncheck the exit time from idle to display because any time can call this animation when our UI text is idle. And set the transition time to zero. For the transition from display to idle, we want the level display animation to play a complete loop and then bend to idle. We don't want this enemy clip suddenly change. Select to the idle animation clip we can set it to the transparent so that we cannot see the UI text in his idle state. We can use enumerator to finish this animation as well. In here, we just use the animation elements to realize now. We can leave the level display alone and press the play button and try it. We can see the default animation clip always run because of its default state. Press the circle button as a trigger point. We will see inside the animator, the current states move to the level display animation clip. Back to Visual Studio, in this episode, we will focus on each script. We need to use the Unity Engine.UI namespace. Actually, we should put all UI parts to the UI Manager script. In this case, we just write some UI elements in our player status scripts. Later, we will try to refactor it. Select our UI text and duplicate the first UI text and drag to the right position.
also we need to play this UI animations. So we need to get the animator components. We use an array to store the same collection of the same type value. We need to get the differences between the current data with our previous data. We have to have our current health point and its previous health point. Also, we need our current magic point and our previous magic point, current attack and previous attack, current defense and previous defense. At the beginning of the game, our current HP is equal to our maximum HP. In terms of previous HP, it should be zero because there is no data before the game beginning. The same reason we did not have the previous MP, previous attack, previous defense. But when we press the spacebar, our previous variables will be updated each click. Our previous HP will be equal to our maximum HP or current HP because our player will not lose his health point in this case. Our previous attack will be also assigned to our current attack, which means this variable is our attack point. When we level up, inside the level up methods, we must calculate the differences between each status has been updated. Only after this part will be meaningful. If not, there will be no any differences value change. We need to update our all current data variables, such as the current HP, current MP, current attack, current defense, to the latest data. And then we can make one animation now. Create one private method. Inside the method first, let's type one for loop. Making sure of the UI tags with animator will play the animation when the player level up. Inside voice, we need to connect the UI tags with our difference value. Our UI tags dot tags should be equal to our current value minus our previous value. Finally, make this animation play using animator.trigger and then inside the parenthesis, the string type is the level up, should be the same as the parameter in our animator window. Let's try it. Hmm, something seems wrong on our health point display. It should be the positive number instead of the negative number. Bind to health point part and check it. Oh, here it should be the HP instead of the MP. Another thing we can do is to create one UI slider to visual our current experience and the next level experience. Select UI and go UI slider. Enlarge our UI slider first. Then delete the handle part. We don't need the handle to drag our slider. We only want to display the percent of our current experience by our script. We can drag the slider value to see the effect. So cool. But if we enlarge the seams, we will find our slider bar is not absolutely snap to the range of our background. So first select the fill game object 
and drag each edges to the fill area first. Then select the fill area game object, adjust his position to the edge of the background. Then we can drag the value to see the effect. Also create one UI text to display our current experience and next level experience. Inside our UI manager script, let's create one slider type variables and one UI text variable. Then drag the game object to our script. We want our slider value as always change according to our player current experience value. Also the maximum value of our slider update when our player level up. In here we can use the next level experience, open square brackets, current level, close brackets to represent our player current next level experience. For the UI slider text, we we'll just put our current experience content and the next level experience content together with the forward slash. All of the variables are the string type. We can change the experience to 150 to see clearly. Cool. The next change will be our player image. We want our player update his image when he reach to the certain level. In UI manager, we need one UI image type variables to hold the references of our player image. Then turn to the player status script. We need one variables to store our player sprites. I use an array to call sprites. I set it as serialized field because I need to drag several sprites inside here, but we don't want this array accessible from another script. Then type public sprite player sprites. This variable is our player source image. Using public field makes us easy to get access in UI manager. First drag our UI image to our game script. Then drag several sprites inside the array. At the beginning of the game, we want our player sprites is the first index of our sprites array. Then move to the level up methods. We want our player to update his image when our player reach a certain level. So we can create one private method responsible for this function. When our player is level 1 or level 2, our player profile will be the first image. Else if statements, if the player level is smaller than 5, which means it's a level 3 or level 4, updated player image, such like this. Cool, back to Unity and play our game. Mm, but it's still not working. The reason is that we did not connect our image update to our UI image part. The image dot sprite is equal to our player status dot player image. Then try again. Cool. The final things we want to do is to make one visual effect, particle system. When we update to a new image, we can create one particle system and reset its transform. and then change his other settings in the inspector.
In here, we use the script to control our particle system. First, public particle systems type level effect. Drag the particle system game object to our player. And then we want to play this animation when we update to a new image. So we can simply type the certain player level using all operator. All operator will return true if one of each condition is true. Only all of the conditions are false will return false. If we match the condition, we will execute the particle system animation. We use enumerator. First, we want our particle system set active to true and play one time. After that, we want our particle system to stop playing and turn back to false. Then, don't forget to call this enumerator inside the query brackets. Inside the particle system, don't forget to uncheck the loop and play on awake. Now, particle system only active when we update our player image. Cool. Try to think about one thing. If you want your particle system to active on the front of the canvas, how to do that? We will talk about it in the future. Alright, this is the end of this video. I have used three episodes to finish one simple level up system, including UI elements, array, for loop, particle systems, animations, and many other things. If you want to review the previous videos or more videos, you can find on my channel. I wish one of my videos can help you a lot. The text version of these videos has been attached the links below. Also, all resources and complete projects can be downloaded from my Google Drive. Perhaps next time we can try to create many players and make one gallery or collectible system for ourselves. Alright, this is the end of this video. If you like it, hope to smash the likes and subscribe button. I'm so appreciative. See you in the next time.